Hello, and welcome to another Hip Historian Virtual Happy Hour Tour. I am Brenda Holt with Arizona AARP. We are the nation's largest nonprofit, nonpartisan organization dedicated to empowering people 50 and older to choose how they live as they age. And during another month of national caregiving, we will be reaching out to caregivers who find themselves in challenging positions of being a caregiver to offer you resources. And you can also find these resources on our website by visiting us at aarp.org backslash caregiving. Enjoy your tour. Be safe and be well. Well, hello, good evening. Oh my gosh, here we are on Christmas Eve Eve. I am so happy that you're able to be here with us this evening. Ah, oh, we've got so much fun coming up. I mean, as we're getting ready to go into Christmas right around the corner, just a couple days away. Now, I know some of you are watching us on YouTube. We've got folks on Twitch. There's probably a couple on Twitter as well, and some of you are even on Facebook. So we have a really great show for you tonight. So what can you expect tonight? Well, you know, we always have a little bit of Arizona music history. We talk about a small town. We've got some great trivia, as well as PJ has is testing my abilities by I have a whole champagne punch to make before your very eyes. We also have a little bit of a holiday story um, from the vault of down in Mesa as well. A really amazing guest. So, you know, we are going to have a blast tonight. Thank you all so much for being here. Now, if this is your first time here, you know, you might be wondering who is that man and why is he on my screen? Well, you know, how did I get here? Well, almost 22 years ago to the day, I was working in a library in Brooklyn. It was actually a beautiful Carnegie building and decided to trade that all for a big, uh, this cute little library in South Phoenix, which is now in really lush digs in a really cute modern building. So just down on 7th Avenue and Buckeye. Now, when we moved here, we moved into a beautiful 1956 ranch. Now, when we got it, it was oh so many tones of beige on the outside, and we promptly painted it seafoam and cantaloupe because we wanted something much more simplified than all that beige. You know, and my house is pretty much a time capsule. There's what my kitchen looks like today. All that buttercream yellow tile, matching appliances. And it still works like a champ today. As I get ready to bake some things for the holidays, you know, you've got to double check because my window, my oven has no window in it. So I have to carefully open and more gingerly shut that door because if I let it slam, my cake may fall. And nobody wants a fallen cake for the holidays. Now, you know, as soon as we got here in Arizona, all I kept hearing about how there was no history here, but I knew that wasn't true because every time I went for an adventure, whether it was on my bike, car, or on foot, I came across so many amazing people, places, and stories. And that's one of the ways I got doing just what I'm doing right now, sharing some of that history. So now today is not just Christmas Eve Eve, but you know, Back in 1883, Felix Hardwick claimed a $500 reward offered by the Arizona Territorial Legislature for the first bale of cotton produced in Arizona. Now, today he would have gotten over $13,000 for that one bale of hay that started what was a one of the five C's of Arizona. 
It is also Happy Festivus, a show that was re- uh, basically a holiday that really came out of a TV show off of Seinfeld, where people have aluminum pole, the airing of the grievances. Um, it actually started one of the writers of the show had a the holiday Festivus in his own house, and it made its way to the show and has become now a Christmas Eve Eve standard. It is also National Christmas Movie Marathon Day. So, you know, sit back, relax, watch all those movies. And we're actually going to talk about at least a song later on that became an entire movie. It is also National Roots Day. As you all get ready to spend time with your family, it's a great time to learn more about your family, your roots, where you came from, how you got to where you are right now. So as we get ready for the holidays. So I'm also known as the hip historian, which means I get to play a lot with Arizona history and have fun. So coming up on January 8th, we are doing another haunted history tour of downtown Phoenix. Those are always a lot of fun as we get to talk about buildings that are still standing after decades, almost century, and right in the middle of cranes erecting a whole new city before our eyes. Also, on that same day, that afternoon, we are doing our Voices of LGBT. We are doing a storytelling circle, virtual. So if anyone would like to participate in that, let me know. Happy to have as many voices as we can. So I see Pam has already found the chat and, you know, you can always reach out to me if we're not running a show and you miss the chat, you can throw something out to me on Facebook, Instagram, email, or even via my website, hiphistorian.com. Now, if you're watching on Facebook, I will ask you to click on that little share button on the bottom. So that way people can see all the fun we're going to have. There might even be some irreverency going on here in a little bit. We shall only see what can we expect tonight. So first off, we're going to talk about Little Arizona. And we're going to talk about a little town called Santa Claus, Arizona. That is in Mojave County, a population of zero it was founded back in 1931. Now, you know, who doesn't want to live in Christmas year round? Well, that's just what a real estate developer thought. She moved to Arizona and she was like, you know, who doesn't want to live in Christmas? So she started up Santa Claus, Arizona, and sadly, nobody bought. And so it did come to be a really popular spot for people to stop at. I mean, it became almost like a little amusement park where you could stop and visit facilities. You, you could visit Cinderella's dollhouse as well as other things. You could stop and have at one point, one of the most amazing meals in Arizona. It was said that many celebrities would come here just for dinner. The Christmas tree Inn was that good. Now, you know, it's just North of the Kingman on 93. Now, if you blink, you might miss it. It's on the little, it's on the side of the road. And sadly, through the years, it's deteriorated. But you know what? It is for sale. So maybe one of you want to move into Christmas year round. And you still can. Now, you know, it would not be happy hour without a cocktail. And so PJ has challenged me. And so let's see. All right. So let's do this. So we are making Santa's Little Helper. Okay, so now let's see. So first we need a little bit of champagne. Oh, good, it didn't even spray out. So it's an entire bottle of champagne that we just pour in. So it gets all nice and foamy. Look at all that deliciousness. As well as some cranberry juice because you know you want it to be a beautiful color as well as then 
some other booze and I'll go through the ingredients. Now you can change these at your will to be whatever you would like to have in them. And then because you never wanna really throw ice into champagne, we have lemon slices that we've frozen. So that way you just dump those in. So as they thaw, keeping the drink nice and cool, it only adds a flavor to our punch. So there you go. And so now a little bit of Santa's little helper. You know, it's funny. I, I knew where my punch bowl was, but I didn't know where the ladle was. So I did finally find my ladle. And so let's talk a little bit about what all is in Santa's little helper. So Santa's Little Helper has a bottle of champagne. We have three cups of cranberry juice, a little bit of dry curacao, as well as a little bit of pomegranate liqueur. So, ah, and Marcy says, you know, frozen lemon slices are good even for iced tea. Maybe with a little bit of vodka to keep it nice and chill. Oh, and that's really nice. Not too sweet. It's not it's not your grandmother's because she would have used sherbet in there to keep it nice and cold and make it extra sweet, probably with 7-Up or Sprite. So it's a nice little twist for the holidays. So that is Santa's Little Helper. So now I'm really excited because we have an extremely special guest for our spectacular Christmas Eve Eve show. Now, if you're all ready, I'm going to bring on Jackie Fontaine. Whoops, actually, let me get rid of my bar because nobody wants to see the bar now. So we're going to bring on... Hey! hey! <laughs> Zink Pow Wow! Wow, is that your bus? No, this isn't my bus. No, this is a secret little hideaway. You know, oh. all those uh, superheroes, which I've been deemed as a superhero these days, we got to have our little hideouts, our, what do you call our uh, dens or whatever. So, uh, but if my mom comes in, don't worry. You know, I, I, she's supposed to be at bingo at the Knights of Columbus right now. But, you know, what can you do? But hey, everybody, good evening. It's so nice to be here on the eve of Christmas Eve. Exactly. So, Jackie, for some folks that may not know who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Jackie Fontaine. I've been an entertainer uh, here in Arizona. Got my start here, as a matter of fact. I've been here since the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. I left during the 90s because, well, unfortunately, I had a situation with gambling and the mob, which runs this town, as you know. So I had to go away to, uh, uh, I, I couldn't go to Hoboken either. So I had to go to, what's that, what's that? not Roatan, uh, you know the place, um, Branson, Missouri. Nice people, okay, <laughs> if you like uh, vanilla. But uh, so, yeah, so, you know, I got my, I, I didn't really grow up here. I'm, grew, I, I'm born and raised in Hoboken, all right? We all know who's from Hoboken, right? <laughs> Frank Blue Sinatra. Are. Frank Sinatra, yeah. Don't mention his name again. Anyways, Ma, no, he's not coming. Oh, gee, see, see what you did. You woke up the dead. <laughs> but Ma, you got to love her. No, anyway, so, you know, we had to move because I had asthma, <laughs> which is no laughing, man. I had asthma really bad. And the doctor said to Ma, he said, Flo, if you don't get little Jackie uh, out here to Arizona, he's probably going to perish. Uh, because of the asthma that he has, you know, and uh, he also had a problem with, you know, doing things at nighttime in the bed that he shouldn't have been doing by himself. But that's another thing that, you know, my agent still talks about. Anyways, what was the question? <laughs> Maybe I've had too many of these. Uh, what are those Christmas drinks that you're drinking there? Indeed. So it's a little Santa's helper. <laughs> Yeah, little Santa's, uh, you know, I played, I used to open for Santa. And, uh, hey, none of that, get your mind out of the gutter. No, 
That's not how I got my gifts. I was a good boy. But I used to open for Santa. And uh, yeah, he used to play all over the world before he was uh, before he was big like he is with presents and everything. And uh, but back to your question, which is uh, how did I get what is my connection with Arizona? Well, I came because I had asthma. The air was beautiful and purified before it is now, which if you go walking on uh, Hiawatha Peak or whatever it's called and you, you get to a certain point, it looks like gravy. Like you could step out off of that mountain and walk, which is a shame. But I understand that we've been doing better with our with our gases and our ozone. So, hey, to you, Arizona, and being a son of Arizona, I'm very happy for the EPA giving you four out of nine stars. Great job. <laughs> but yeah, no, I used to perform when the Arizona State Fair first started. I was here. I, I helped, you know. As a matter of fact, it, it used to be uh, was it was uh, downtown. As a matter of fact, it wasn't on 19th Avenue and McDowell. You remember where it was, Marshall, Indeed. right? Indeed, yeah, it was down the riverbed. Exactly, yeah. So I was down. I just happened to be down at the riverbed when they started setting up. They had a big Ferris wheel, and I'm privy to rides. <laughs> I like nice shapely rides, if you know what I mean. There we were. We talked, and I was one of the opening acts there. OK, uh, and uh, we, I, you know, I can't reveal too much because I think we're going to have some trivia. I know we have some trivia coming up in just a little bit. So I was going to say, don't reveal too much because otherwise we'll give away all the answers to our trivia. Exactly. And you notice I'm kind of dodging it. You know, I'm, I'm trying Indeed. to make sure I don't give out too much information. But let me just say this, that Maryville was at the time we lived, Ma and I lived in Maryville, you know, and uh, at the time. I think that was one of the one out of three Circle K's in the whole state of Arizona. And of course, Paul, I'm going to get a little choked up right now. Paul goes out for a pack of cigarettes on the eve of Christmas Eve. He never comes back. Oh, so this is a very emotional holiday for you. You're lucky you got me tonight. I never said, I don't know who my dad, I know who, I never saw him again. He actually, he didn't even go to a Circle K. He went to the other competitor. You know who the competitor was, right? You told him. Ah, indeed. Not Yellow oh, Front? Folks. Yellow Front. That's where I, yeah, I used to get all my uh, my uh, my clothes at Yellow Front. Yeah, my dad, my dad, my dad, we're talking, why you got to bring up my dad all the time? My dad would go get night crawlers and a pair of, of jeans for me. And they were all laid out on a table at Yellow Front. They were like $3.99 for a pair of jeans that are built better now than the ones for $129. I can tell you right now. And don't tell me it's because of my stomach. This, no, don't tell me it's because of this. No, no, no. I've been working out, baby. Well, that's a fancy suit you got on there. Is, is oh, that yeah. gold lame? There's more of me where I come from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this is gold lame. I got this off a little Japanese gal. I'm sorry, you're not supposed to say Japanese, an Oriental gal. And uh, her and I, we, we, we hooked up for a long time. Uh, she had a, 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 a nice uh, faux noodle place, you know, because the big, you know, the, the Japanese love faux noodles. And uh, so uh, uh, that's when she, she, she made this herself. She had a whole nest of silkworms. And uh, and she had them all. Name was Bobby Richie, Yee Yee, and uh, they would. She could tell them. Uh, and on a on a command, they'd spin a jacket. So wow. uh, they'd put it out small. First they do like pasties, you know, because she was a dancer, and then they do underwears and things like that. And uh, so here you are now, you know. And uh, I had I had uh, this made special for to show off the uh, the uh, credentials that I carry. Uh, my chest and my jewels. Indeed. Looking all blingy over there. <laughs> As always. <laughs> and Anything just a Christmas tree that gets adorned. So indeed. So, so we've got some trivia coming up. Yeah. And so what we'll do with trivia is we're going to go through all the questions and answers. And then. We'll take a little bit of an Arizona music break and then we'll launch into the stories of those answers. Hey, I like that. That's a good idea. So, and the fun will ensue. All right. 
So our first question, Jackie Fontaine got his big break in the early 60s when he was discovered by what famous talent scout here in Phoenix? Now, this same talent scout also discovered the likes of Wayne Newton and his brother. Oh, yeah. All right. Newton. So was that A, Pac McMahon, B, Lou King, C, Robert Black, or D, Mary Santiago? Those so are all which one of those people was a talent scout? I tell you, I know all of them. They're all fine people, and they all helped me in one way or another. Ah. All right. Our second question. What famous nightclub mind reader did Jackie Fontaine open for on occasion at the Valley's Playboy Club back in the 70s? Was it A, the amazing Kreskin, B, Sam Marento, C, Dr. Richard Ireland, or D, the professor? All right. So, wow, you, wow, you played in the, at the Playboy Club. That's kind of swanky. Oh, it sure was. <laughs> I got a lot of secrets. You know, you know who you also go, used to go there was uh, uh, Gelangelo. The guy that owns the sports places. Ah, I can. A, he was a young guy, young guy then. Yeah, I would very much believe that. Okay, question three: What iconic Valley restaurant did Jackie often guest play the trumpet for, and act in a melodrama or two? Was it A. Crazy Ed's, B. Wacky Wallace's? C, Goofy Greg's, or D, Rawhide? Oh, boy. So, yeah, so which one of those restaurants did Jackie perform at? Yeah. All right, moving on to question four. I like how you move on. Jackie Fontaine is often spotted as an MC for diverse venues. What famous 1970s Valley Drag Bar ran by Tony Bartoli did Jackie MC for three weeks until he was fired for taking peaks and grabbing ass? Oh, my. <laughs> it was the oh, 70s. My. So was it, that, was, I... <laughs> it was the 70s. I went for low dangling fruit, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Nothing against people that are fruity. I like all, right. all of so them. was it Casa de Roma? A was it also B the 307? C Angels Desert Drag Review or D Ferris? All right, so you're trying to figure out where Jackie was an MC in the 70s. Yeah, all right, moving on to question five. And Sherry says she knows most of the answers. <laughs> Sherry, it's good to see you. All I right. Probably no Sherry then. <laughs> All right. Question five. What blockbuster movie about bad gambling habits recently filmed in Arizona star Jackie Fontaine, D. Scott Withers, and a maniacal furry purple puppet named Kitchity Catchity, and many local actors and crews? Was it A. Fire in the Sky? B, The Gauntlet, C, The Miss OTB Scandal, or D, Poker India Face. So while you're trying to figure out what really big movie was Jackie Fontaine in, we're going to move on to question six. Wow. Okay. We're moving on. Indeed we are. All right. So question six, Jackie Fontaine once took a whirlwind tour through downtown Phoenix in 1977, thinking he had boarded a Bucky Point when actually he had mistaken a bus touting this now politically incorrect logo. What was the logo and the name associated with it? Oh my. All right. Was it A? The sun, wearing, the sun wearing a sombrero, Tico. B, the Grand Canyon in the shape of a Native American chief, Indian. C, a Latin man swimming, get back. D, a fiery low rider named Cholo Golo. Ah, while well, you're trying to figure out what did the city have, 
as a logo for buses, we yeah. are going to move on to question seven. Yeah, bus a move. All right, question seven. What <laughs> famous Phoenix native superhero had and still has a restraining order against Jackie Fontaine for drunken stalking? Oh, I can see there's oh, a come story on, there. man. You got to bring up dirt like that on me. <laughs> So, was it A, Captain Super, B, Barry Goldwater, C, Wonder Woman, or D, Salt River Pete? Wow, those were all, all people that were right here. So, it could be any one of them. Yeah, well, it I'm, could be. I'm shocked there's not a, all of the. I'm shocked there's not all of the above. Who's Olive? <laughs> all of the above. What? It, exactly. <laughs> Okay. All right. Move on from that one there. It's embarrassing. All right. Exactly. So which iconic underground rave did Jackie Fontaine's manager grade Lutz VJ for in the early 90s? Was it A? I'm saying that bum. Where is Greg, my manager, that bum? I ain't seen him. Well, you know, I'm, sho- I'm shocked he booked you for today, knowing that it was such an emotional day for you. Yeah, where's my Christmas bonus, that jerk? <clears throat> so okay, okay so was that iconic venue was it a inferno b club lollipop c the silver dollar or d chupa so one of those was an iconic underground rave where your manager used to play videos not play video like play video games he was a vj oh a vj guy, okay he created videos when he was you know, busy or, or not busy or whatever. And then he'd come to that place and he'd play him. I went there a couple of times. It was a happening place. You had I, Pete Tellez and Blaze and all, all kinds of folks, it sounds like. Yeah. All right. So question nine, Jackie Fontaine is still recouping from losing his life savings in which 80s financial institute? And who was it ran by? A, was it Valley National Bank? And Walter Reed, was it B, Grand Canyon Savings and Thrift, Don Bowles, or C, Lincoln Savings and Loan, Charles Keating, or D, Gothic City Bank by Michael Keaton? All right. So, yeah. So, I I have a feeling that's probably a touchy subject as well. So, let's move on. Yeah, I never got my toaster. I was supposed to get a free toaster for open up an account. All I got was this stupid sponge that looked like a dollar. You put it in water. And he goes, your money grows. Bullshit. Move on. <laughs> All right. Question 10. Jackie Fontaine claims to have been abducted by aliens on multiple occasions. Many think it's his bourbon blackouts. Hmm. In which Arizona city did Jackie claim to have experienced close encounters of the third kind? I, I got probed. Was it A, Pumpkin Center, Arizona, B, Meteor Crater City, C, the Bikini Lounge, or D, Naco, Arizona? Hey, oh, my you, gosh. You so which one of those places has, has, an, has, an, has an out of this world connection? You're still on the wrong thing there. Who's your grip? You're still on number nine. No, we're on ten. Oh, I see number nine. What the heckle? No, oh, yeah, no, just, just wait. Seven, minute, seven second delay. I don't mean to be angry. I just, you know, if you know, if I'm going to get five bucks, I want to make sure I got my money's worth. We we all want to get our money's worth. Oh yeah. So what? What now? Are they? Has everybody got little pencils? Are they? Uh, are they? Uh... Oh yeah. So they are all sitting at home. They've taken the quiz. <laughs> so while they're locking in their final answers, so we're we're going to give them a chance to kind of ruminate over some of those possibilities, because you know maybe maybe it's Naco, maybe it's another place who knows you know we're, we're, well, we're gonna we're gonna find out in just a moment where did the phoenix lights what part of the city did the phoenix lights come from oh i think that i think that was up by um dreamy draw dreamy draw wow so i had yep. some dreamy drawers one time 
I, I bet they were snacks. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, they they were edible. Oh, well, there you go. So moving on. Hmm. So we're going to do a little bit of Arizona music break. And, you know, for Christmas, we're going to talk about one of the most classic Christmas songs <laughs> that was done right here at the Arizona Biltmore. Oh, that's right. Wow. I mean, it then became a movie and it was called Holiday Inn <laughs> and wow. it featured Irving Berlin's song white christmas and it was actually written at this pool which many folks call the Marilyn monroe pool because she liked to swim in it oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i got stories about her there's chlorine in this town <laughs> and so everybody wrote white christmas as he was sitting by that pool under the palm trees dreaming of a white Christmas because if you look out your window now we don't have a white Christmas and so sure it wasn't Irving Biltmore that wrote it in Berlin <laughs> Just checking. let's do some fact checking here so in fact there's actually a little known verse that's talking about the sun is shining the grass is green and the orange and palm trees sway there's never been such a day in Beverly Hills, LA. So that's the little homage to it being recorded right here or written right here in Phoenix and going on to become a holiday classic. Wow. Indeed, done right here. Okay, so now we're getting ready to go into some answers. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Yeah, uh -oh. okay. All right. I have well, teak scores. All right. First, I'm, I'm going to need to. Yeah, freshen up your uh, libation there, pal. Indeed. Get myself fortified. I say you're doing as well. I am doing that. All right. So our first question. So, Jackie, you got your first big break with the same talent scout that discovered the likes of Wayne Newton. That's and right. who was that? That was Lou King. Lou King. Oh, my he, gosh. He had his own show, Lou King and the Rangers or something like that. So here I am, you know, uh, Ma sends me out. She wants me to sell candy during Christmas. I don't let her know that the money I've been making is by hanging out at places like the Caravan Hotel on Van Buren. Okay. That was a big place back there, you know, back in the 60s. And there would be a lot of stars that would come in from New York or Hollywood or whatever. Because like I said, the weather here in Phoenix and the, and the air was so pure and everything. And it, the attitude was pure. It was ripe for being taken advantage of by all of the movie stars and all of the entertainers. And most of the entertainers, what they want, they want to get away from the, the hoopla, the big cities and stuff. And they come to some place like Arizona where they really were appreciated and, and people soaked them in. And there was the, there was a purity of the heart here in Phoenix at that time. This still is, you know, you can find it if you, you know, you look around a nook and a cranny here, you're going to find it. I'm sure all your listeners are very pure of heart and very, very appreciative of the arts and everything. And they don't tell, they don't do gossip or anything like that. So one night, Wayne Newton couldn't show up, okay? He had acne or something like that because he was a young guy. So I happened to be in the audience. And at the time I played the accordion. I still play the accordion, but I got a bad back from it. So it says, hey, let's have a talent night. I get up on stage and I do uh, Amore, you know, and I, I do it with the with a lot of Italian machismo, you know, and I do it with the with the accordion. And Luke King goes crazy. And he signs me on to do on his show. He gets me on. uh uh, local shows here, KPHO and everything. And next thing I know, boom, ba, zing, ba, wow. Jackie Fontaine is heading for Vegas. As Vegas is basically, they just pushed the shovels of dirt in Vegas. And they, they didn't know how it was going to go. So they needed people that didn't have big names that, you know, they could waste the time with. Well, <laughs> little did they know, they're dealing with Jackie Fontaine. Zing, ba, wow. Indeed, zing pow wow, baby. All right. So, what famous nightclub reader did Jackie Fontaine open for on occasion at the Valley's Playboy Club in the 70s? 
<laughs> wow, Dr. Richard Ireland. Dr. Richard Ireland, that guy, my God. You know what? That guy knew if I was circumcised or not without even looking. And at the time, I wasn't wearing no Tom Jones pin, you know, panties or anything like uh, that. The guy could tell anybody anything, you know. And that was at the Playboy Club, which was down at what? The 3033 North Central. I don't remember the name of it. It was uh, whatever the building was. You know, not too far there was also the FBI building. So we had to be careful, you know. But a lot of FBI guys are coming there, too. But, yeah, you know, I would go in there. By this time, I had a good name for myself. Dr. Rich, we used to call him, would, would give me a call and say, hey, Jackie, I need somebody who can bedazzle the crowd, kind of get them loosened up so their minds will open and be free. Because, you know, when you hear you're going to see a mind reader, the first thing you do, you close up, you know. It's, it's, you know, like being at some singles bar. You're going to cross your legs, you know, right? So this guy would come out. Well, first, I would come out and I would do a lot of jokes about about memory and, and about where I placed my keys, you know, and then I would dip into somebody's, uh, you know, dress and, and find my keys or something like that. Then, boom, he'd come out and, boy, he would, he would razzle, dazzle. I remember one time uh, we had Kitty. Uh, what's her name? Kitty from... Uh, Oh, from Barclay. Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke. She was there. Ah. And, uh, yeah, people like that would be there. Uh, like I said, uh, Angelo, G, G. Angelo, the guy that owns every sports thing here in Arizona. Now, he probably won't like this. I think he's running GCU right now or whatever. Or maybe he's got a GCU. I don't know. But uh, what the hell was the question? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's a mind reader. See, he's messing with me. That guy, I tell you what, he could he could tell you what's going to happen to you uh, before you even knew what was going to happen to him. So I so my little story about Richard Ireland is I've never seen him perform, but <laughs> an old friend of yours, Rusty Warren. Oh yeah, Rusty. Warren. So Rusty, um, he Not had a long. really good kind of business manager assistant that was helping him run the show, and she was able to lure him to be her assistant. That's right. So she basically stole him. <laughs> so. That's right. Well, you know, because Rusty Warren, you know, she had an amazing life. Even before she started in comedy. I don't know if I'm at liberty to tell anything about her, but I'll tell you what. I actually met her in Vegas. Her and Eva. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, what do you call, you know, call girls? You know, that's how they paid the bills. You know, a young man would... Uh, Give them a call. They'd come by and they would be escorted to, you know, she was Lady Luck or whatever you want to say, you know. And um, so, you know, she was always assisting people. So it makes sense that she would assist somebody. Uh, so that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. So moving on to question three. What iconic Valley restaurant did Jackie often guest play the trumpet <laughs> as well as act in a melodrama or two <laughs> or three? Guess what? That's the wrong answer there, pal. Oh, no. <laughs> That's the wrong answer, you know. Uh, and I can see how it would have gotten mixed up. But does anybody remember cra Crazy Ed's? Oh, wow. Crazy Ed's. Yeah, they had it was up on 19th Avenue in Deer Valley. You know, I'm sorry. I probably wrote something in there, you know, about a cookout or something that that got people confused. Forgive me. But the real answer is Crazy Ed's. Oh. They wouldn't have me at Rawhide. That was a family journey. They really want me to have me there now because it's not even owned by anybody from America. You hear what I'm saying? America. This is America. All right. But anyways, yeah. So, uh, boy, you got rid of that one real quick. You <laughs> want me to talk about Crazy Eds? Sure. Yeah. Tell me a story about Crazy Eds. Crazy I've Ed. never heard of Crazy Eds. Oh, my God. You know what? I'm going to send you a menu from Crazy Eds. That was 19th Avenue. They I mean, You should go, you know, not right now, but wait. Google that. Or go to YouTube. I think there's a YouTube channel for Crazy Eds or a Facebook wow. channel. It was amazing. You go up there. You talk about fun. And I like fun. Crazy Eds was the craziest place 
I mean, when you walked in the door, you thought you were in Louisiana or someplace. They played a banjo, and I played the trumpet there every once in a while, and uh, and it was it was crazy, and they did melodramas and some great music and some good food. Oh man, they had some good food. And it so was now, now I'm gonna there. do I'm gonna do a little trick because okay. Sherry said, "Oh, Ed Chilean." Yeah, I guess was Crazy Ed. Crazy Ed. Do you, I think he's still around. So that's what, yeah, exactly. She's just like, oh, he should be a guest. I'm like, ooh, I would love to have him on as a guest. That guy. Oh, man. So much energy. One of the one of the greatest performers I ever met. And he, he knew how to, to just uh, bring in the crowd. He had a good Dixieland blues, you name it, band. I, I love the guy. Wow. But, you know, I still owe him like 50 bucks. So, <laughs> so, that, so I shouldn't drop your name when I try no, to get a good to be a guest. Yeah. So it was 19th Avenue and what was the cross street? Deer Valley. Ah, uh, okay. So oh, it was way up there. Oh, it was okay. way up there. Yeah. You know, you brought people from out of town up there and you, you brought a camper or, you know, a travel trailer with you. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Deer Valley. Deer Valley had some, some crazy stuff. We'll have to talk about that later on. Indeed. That'll be the the happy hour after dark. There you go. Yeah. All right. So Jackie often was spotted as an MC for what venue that was run by Tony Bertoli? <laughs> Casa de Roma. I'm oh, my gosh. You. Casa de Roma. That was a great. I mean, you talk about, you know, the show Victor Victoria. Yeah. How classy that was. Or the birdcage. I yeah. mean, that was the day when when you didn't have some pup tent outside for the for the performers. You know, the drag queens, they work very hard. Those folks are the hardest working people they are. They work for tips and and they are amazing, you know. And I, it just it just hurts me. It's like a stab. You could take the knife out of the ham in the in the kitchen at Christmas and just jab it into my chest when I when I drive by a bar and I see a tent out in the back, you know, and these people have to dress in that tent. I don't I don't get that, but I understand, you know, you have to have a cabaret license and you know all that stuff. But the casa, oh, when you when you walked in, you felt like you were you would be greeted. And, you know, where, where shall you sit, you know, and enjoy and relax? As a matter of fact, before Pa went out for a pack of cigarettes and never came back at the Utotem, he used to take Ma out on the town. There was a lot of places here in town, especially on Van Buren. That was a big, big place to go here in town, you know. And he took, so as, as a joke, <laughs> he took Ma to Casa de Roma. To this day, she don't know that those were men dressed as women. And they were beautiful. So unfortunately, when Tony asked me to MC, I didn't know that either. You know, so, you know, I may have gotten a little frisky, you know. Uh, it's in my nature. You know the old story about the scorpion and the tortoise, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, that was me. It's my nature, you know. So I got I got kicked out of there because uh, I said I was looking for my car keys in Tish Tanner's upper area. If anyone knows oh. Tish, Tanner was. Tish Tanner, her great song, which was I Will Survive. And that's uh, they never had me back again. But I snuck in <laughs> dressed as a woman. <laughs> Yeah, it's another story. Did you look like your mom? I dressed as my mom. Yeah, you would never know. <laughs> nice. What a lovely lady she is. All right. So what blockbuster movie about bad gambling habits was recently filmed right here in Arizona? And I know star Jackie Fontaine as well as some other folks, including a puppet named Kitchity Catchity. And that would be the Miss OTB scandal. That's right. The Miss OTB scandal. That's right. We just rapped on that a while ago. But, you know, Andrew Osborne, who uh, co-wrote that with uh, Greg Lutz, my manager again. The guy's got his fingers in everything. <clears throat> but uh, but uh, uh, Andrew 
produced it, directed it, did everything. And he put together a fine, fine movie. Because, you know, we've got to address the fact that some people have problems with, with gambling. Not me. No, I win all the time. So I got no problems with gambling. Okay. But yeah, this movie, it used local actors and, and local crews and local venues and everything. Because Arizona is ripe with a platitude of, of venues that look like other places because what, where's everybody from, from here? They're all from other places. So they try to make it their home. So there's little, little areas that look like other areas, you know? So uh, the, basically it's available now on Apple TV. It's available on, I think prime it's available. Oh, wow. all, yeah. It's available all over the place. And I was lucky enough. They called me and asked me if I'd like to be in it because I actually have the Jackie Fontaine, OTB Foundation, you know, and uh, where we take care of people that are that are uh, uh, afflicted with OTB. And uh, basically, it's about these two uh, desert dwelling icons, Jackie Fontaine, myself and Kitchity Catchity, who just happens to be a purple furry sock puppet. OK, but hey, they can do damage, too, you know, and uh, they, they they devised this scam to have a beauty pageant in Las Vegas, but there is no beauty pageant. <laughs> but just as you think they're going to get away with it, zinc pow, wow, all hell breaks loose. So if you think of something like the, the hangover meets planes, trains, automobiles meets it's a mad, 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 mad world, you're thinking the right thoughts. I suggest go see. It's a beautiful holiday uh, Christmas movie. You might even say it might be somewhat faith-based because, you know, they're bad people that get their comeuppets in the end. So maybe they get saved. I don't know. You go see it. Wow. And I and now, and now I know I can. I didn't realize it was actually viewable. So I can it's look at it on Apple TV, TV as well as on Prime. Sweet. Yeah, you'll recognize some people. It's got a lot of local people. Good, fine actors here in, in, uh, in Phoenix. I would name them all, but I wouldn't because I'm afraid I'd leave somebody out. So you just go on, what is it, IMDb, or you go on uh, uh, Prime, or you go and just watch it, enjoy it. Indeed, I will be sure and go on and enjoy it. Yeah, please. And don't bullshit me. Go do it. I'll know. Because they got it. Because they got cameras in your television, and I'll know if you're watching or not. Oh. Loop, loop, loop. Hey, Jackie, someone's watching your television show. And I'll send you something. Or maybe I won't. <laughs> okay. So you're kind of like Santa. You, you know you know when people are being good or bad. That's right. I'm like Santa. I'll come down your chimney. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. Bring in gifts. All right. So <laughs> Jackie took a bus back in 1977. And what logo was on that bus? Look at that. It's the sun wearing a sombrero. I find that offensive. That's like that's like having a, a gondola in Italy with the picture of me uh, drinking out of a wine bottle, you know, and calling it uh, gondola baloney. I don't know. That's <laughs> bullshit. I'm glad the city wised up and uh, they don't have offensive bullshit like that anymore. No, it was, you know, that was the beginning. I think I think the buses went from like uh, they went from Central. You know, they had the little hub down on like Central Avenue. And that is a matter of fact, right across the street was a place I used to perform at called. I think it was called Diamond Lills. You ever heard of that? Oh, place? I have heard of Diamond Lills. Oh, oh I didn't know you perform there. It was shady. You had to get there early. You know, real early if you wanted to catch the crowd, because that was that, that was either the, the, the before crowd that would have to go to, you know, work downtown when there was work downtown. And uh, but uh, anyway, so I think I think the hub of the buses was uh, was um, Central Avenue in like Washington. And then it would go out to like maybe 51st Avenue was the furthest it would go out to and then turn around and go, what the fuck did I come out here for? You know, can I say that word? Well, I, yeah, you already did. So there Are you, you go. In, I'll take it back. I'm sorry. Beep. 
Yeah. He's a what? Yes. It was the act. You look at his Well, I guess he up all the way out to 51st Avenue. And people would go, hey, what am I doing here? And then I think it went as far as they didn't go to Scottsdale because Scottsdale, oh, they had their own. What, Ollie the Trolley? Oh, I mean, you yeah. talk about offensive. I'll tell you, Ollie the Trolley, that's offensive. You know, all those Scandinavians going, hey, wait a minute. That's not what I sound like. You know, get out of here. That, that Wally trolley, Ollie thing, you know, come on, you know. Oh, have another Yom and Yeri. <laughs> See how upset I am right now. Oh, my God. All yeah, right. So, well, let, so let's go on to the next question, which will probably you'll we'll probably get you even more upset. <laughs> here, keep okay, go ahead. All right. So what famous Phoenix native superhero has a restraining order against Jackie Fontaine? <laughs> You're so close because this guy, this guy, he was he was a true super superhero. Amazing, you know. I remember my uh, my mom was in the hospital. Okay, she was in a hospital. She had like phlebitis, and this guy came in, and he he jumped through the window, and he did his whole thing, Captain Super, and lifted her spirits up. But that's not the answer. Oh, it's not the answer. No, it's not. I got the wrong answer, pal. Superhero is Wonder Woman. Oh, Linda, Linda Carter. Carter. Linda Carter. Oh, wow. Here. Yeah, see, somebody. See, that's that Greg, that stupid idiot Greg. I know. My manager was supposed to, you know, put put on the, the notes and stuff. What the hell's going on? But and where is he? That's you know, always, good. you know, that's I always wonder that. Where is Greg? Because he's never to be seen. You never see the guy. But Linda Gray who was playing Wonder Woman in the 70s. She was the Grand Marshal for the, uh, what's the parade here? The uh, Oh, the Fiesta Bowl? <laughs> it had a Fiesta Bowl, or maybe it was the uh, uh, JC's. I don't know. Oh, the Rodeo Parade. Rodeo Parade. And she was the Grand Marshal. That's probably back like, I don't know, 77 or something like that. And uh, we got the, you know, we were supposed to ride in the same car together. And once again, I lost the car keys, and I went searching for the car keys. <laughs> And, uh, you know, there she had her golden lasso, which I, you know, I don't hear so good. I heard something else besides golden lasso. And, you know, I took the cue. I thought she was trying to pick me up. I'm not going to say what it is because I know you don't have that seven second delay, you know. Exactly. Whatever. No, no, no beep. That seven second delay or that six inch delay. I don't know what it is, but that's so I can't go there. But, yeah, then she misunderstood I, I got slapped. She's a big woman, too. And as a matter of fact, I still got TMJ from when she's when she sucker punches me, you know, which, hey, if you're going to be sucker punched by a woman, <laughs> let it be Linda Carter. <laughs> and exactly. The fine woman she is. And I still to this day, I apologize and hope someday she'll take that restraining order away and uh, we can frolic off into parade land. <laughs> All right, so now we get a chance to talk about a little bit of Greg's history. Jeez, why you got to bring Greg into this? So I, I know he's your manager, and you don't necessarily get along that well, but he was talking about how he used to DJ at an iconic rave back in the early 90s, and it was called Chupa. That's right, Chupa. <laughs> You know, and again, I'm going to forget all the people, but I know there was Blaze, there was uh, Pete Salas, uh, there was Eddie Amador, and there was about six or seven other guys, uh, Mike Gomez, people like that, that I'll tell you what, were instrumental. You know, you some people, you know, you think underground raves, late night, you know, people who are in another world or, you know, dancing to stuff, you know, but I tell you. It really kept it, it. It created a community, which this city hadn't had in, in, in forever. I think you know. Ever, I mean, before you had the uh, the uh, the speakeasy at uh, at the Biltmore, that was the last time you could get together and you know have you know naughty fun or whatever. <clears throat> but I remember Greg. He what he did was he would go through alleys and pawn shops and and thrift stores, and he would find old broken down television sets, and then he would. 
he created a television tree that was on these these stands that looked like something that would be you know in a 1970s uh you know uh uh uh, movie or something like that and it would have different images on each or different videos playing on each screen and greg would create these videos himself without a computer okay because he's an idiot okay so he didn't have a computer but he would just do it on video you know and um they were amazing maybe sometime greg can send you one of the videos and you can just show it i know he's got some videos from chupa because i would love to see those because yeah, people talk yeah, about yeah. chupa and uh, so that was, you know, that was, uh, and he, so they built like, I think it was uh, Pete Sellers or, or uh, uh, Eddie Amado, somebody built this little uh, choo-choo train type thing. And he would have all of his gadgets up there and he would uh, entertain the people with videos. Wow. And so Pete has a club downtown. Right. So he's got that as well as he also has that little taco place in, um, in the San Carlos. That's right. That guy, I tell you, he's he's fantastic. He's got quite an enterprise there, and which, you know, to me is just, you know, that's the way it should be, because that guy has busted his butt, you know. Maybe someday, Pete, you can play some of Greg's old uh, uh, old um, weirdo videos that he played at Chupa at your places. Ah, I will. I will let him know. I, I didn't realize how involved he was. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. All right, so Jackie, you lost your life savings in the 80s with Charles Keating. Yeah. And that whole Lincoln Savings and Loan debacle that took the country by storm. It sure did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I had to trade in the Cadillac I had because of that bozo. Now, a lot of people say, hey, he was just like anybody else. He just got caught. Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, look at Murdy, uh, Bernie Madoff, okay? You know, like everybody else, he got caught too, you know? It's still happening to your money right now with these bozos in Washington and New York and wherever else, you know? That's why I say invest with the Jackie Fontaine Investment Company. You'll never go wrong. Look me up online and you'll see my portfolio. And probably more than I'd like to as well. <laughs> that's right. No, hey, that sound, you know, that doesn't sound funny. There's a lot of people lost a lot of money, and I'm sorry for that. But I lost money too, you know. And, uh, but yeah, that was just, you know, something. There was a lot of people hiding out here in Arizona, you know, back in the 70s. It was a kind of a place like an umbrella for both the mob, you know, and, and for, uh, you know, uh, shysters. And it was just a shame because there's a lot of people that retire here in Arizona. We've got to watch out for our senior citizens. Thank God I'm years away from being a senior citizen. So that means you're not a member of AARP? Oh, I'm a member. Yeah, they made me an honorary member of AARP. Yeah, you know, because I do okay. so good for them. But I'm not even close. But I, I love AARP. I tell you what. There'd be a lot of times that I was short, you know, a dollar fifty at Denny's, and hey, that uh, discount comes in handy. All right, so Jackie, where are you abducted by aliens? Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Meteor Center. I what? You got it wrong again. <laughs> it's wrong. Ah, uh, Greg, he was supposed he he basically proof it all. He's these. supposed to give you the answers. What's wrong with him? Does anybody remember Pumpkin Center up north, not too far from Sholo and Snowflake and all them places? It was called Pumpkin Center. Ah. Maybe, it, maybe it's not called Pumpkin Center anymore. Maybe they don't have pumpkins up there. Too cold. No. That's probably it. Yeah, there I am. I'm out walking my dog. Boink. And uh, the next thing I know, I hear this voice saying... Did you want, did you want a doggy bag with that? I'm up in outer space and I'm getting probed all over the place. It was not that bad, you know, not that because the stuff they gave you to forget that you probed. Oh, 
That wasn't bad at all. That uh, you talk about being in outer space and Rocket Man. Hey, I'm on a blowing a fuse on everyone. I wish they'd come back. I'm still building a giant, uh, a giant ma. No, oh, hold on a second, ma. I told you no. But you were supposed to take me to the. Shut up. No, just go back. No, you were supposed to take me to. Oh, jeez. Sorry about that. Talking about being abducted. But yeah, I'm still making in the kitchen. I got a big giant, uh, a big giant uh, uh, mashed potato uh, monument that I'm making that looks like uh, Picacho Peak. Ah. Got a sunburn on one side of my face. You can take that to the bank. Nice. So, all right. So, basically, we always ask people how they did on trivia. And Jeff already knows the drill. He got three out of ten. Woo! I guess. I mean, I know I missed at least three. So, maybe so, you did better. So, yeah. So, but, you know, it's not necessarily how many you got right. But look at all these stories. That's you can now right. regale folks with people of stories about Chupa. Exactly. And Casa de Roma. There you go. So many good stories. Exactly. And I, you know, if anybody's got any questions, I, I got memorabilia. You know. But I, I love the idea of trying to track down Crazy Ed. You should. Yeah, talk to Crazy Ed. I'll tell you what, <clears throat> that was the place to go when you went there. Oh. <laughs> Man, it, I mean, it, you were just amazed. You know, as an entertainer myself, I was just amazed. Like, what is this guy doing all the way out in the desert out here when he could be someplace like, you know, uh, you know, in L.A., uh, wherever. But I realized it's because he could do what he wants to do, have fun, be creative, and no one's going to put his, put them under his thumb. So, Jackie, what are your plans for the holidays? Well, for the Holloways, Holloways, uh-oh, hmm. I had a little bit of that drink that you were making there, but I didn't make it with uh, what you made. I made it with Alka-Seltzer and um, uh, Cairo syrup and gin. If you don't Not have all the syrup? It, it's, it's great, yeah. So, uh, But anyways, Ma and I, I'm going to try to, you know, help Ma. She's going to go to the uh, the beauty parlor in the morning. Then she's going to go to the senior center and they're going to take care of her for Christmas Eve. And then we're going to go to mass. And then uh, I might be going uh, around town and caroling. OK, so what I would like your people to do is put their address down in the whatever. And I'll come over Carol uh, into their front yard or whatever. You know, 50 bucks. I'll, go, <laughs> I'll do that. You know? Hey, it's worth it, you know. But just a quiet, nice, you know, uh, <clears throat> usually, as you know, Marshall, usually you and I are getting ready for uh, New Year's Eve. I know. And, you know, it was just it was, you know, with all that's going on, this stupid coat, you know, this 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 pandemic, which I'm not making light of. I mean, there's a lot of people that I know that are no longer with us or they got sick, you know, or whatever. You got to be careful. You got to wear a mask. You got to get uh, vaccinated. And some people may say, what is he, you know, why is he got to say that right now? Well, because look where we're at. I'm an entertainer. I can't get out and do my job because this thing's running crazy. So I don't know. Maybe you and I could do something for New Year's. I, I know it's a last minute deal. You know, we could do something online. What we could do is, is you know, wait like 10 minutes till midnight, pop on. You know, do the countdown naked or whatever, you know, <laughs> and uh, ring in the new year, the new year. Indeed. Although I do want to show Anita's response was she got six out of 10. That wow. was once the correct answers were provided because the host <laughs> got some of them wrong. Well, there you go. <laughs> See, you never know on this show right here. This guy's smart. He, it, Marshall engineers stuff so that you, you know, it's kind of like you get down to the bottom of the box and you find another prize in there. See, and then how do you feel? That was Anita, right? How do you feel, Anita? You feel vin uh, vindicated. You feel, you feel like you're something special. 
That's what this guy does. Marshall, he had it all planned. <laughs> and then, so Sherry does say, oh, let's try that again. So I didn't realize so crazy yet also opened up the horny toad up yeah. in Cave Creek back yeah. in the seventies. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Wow. So he really was. Okay. So Sherry, I might try and hit you up and see if you have any way to contact him because it go. sounds like he would be make a hoot of a host. Oh yeah. And I tell you the horny toad has got the best, uh, 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 uh fish and chips. They got everything, oh. the fish and chips. Boy, I don't know what that guy does to them. So, Jackie, thank you so much for coming on and being a guest hey. on. <laughs> and okay, now I, I <laughs> so thanks. Now that now that you got this going, so now Anita says she feels totally vindicated now. Good, 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 Anita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Maybe there's a special prize for you for getting what it was it six out of what. And being vindicated because you know vindication needs to uh, hang out with vindication, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, Jackie, again, thank you so much for sharing some of yourself with us for the holidays, as we're all celebrating Christmas Eve. Eve. Well, I tell you what, it's been amazing, Marshall, and I love it. And you, 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 you put you have instilled. The, the spirit of Christmas, Kwanzai, Hanukkah, whatever it is that you that you do, you have instilled it in me. And I am filled with the excitement and joy of just of just everybody just sharing joy with each other. Exactly. That's All thanks right. to you. Well, so. Jackie, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your night. You too. Hey, everybody, sing pow wow. <laughs> all right so there we have some trivia from jackie so our next vid is from the vault and anita be glad you know where your car keys are because oh that jackie oh all right so from the vault we're actually going to talk a little bit about mesa and, you know, if you make it all the way out to Mesa to go visit the temple out there to see some amazing lights, you know, there's also a story about Mesa and Christmas that I think is probably one of the best. If they've tried to put it into a movie, people wouldn't believe it. Um, and I do. And I did remember, I think recently somebody did a play about it as well. But it's all about how Santa Claus was going to come to Mesa in an airplane back in the early thirties, when airplanes were something brand spanking new, it was, and we were also in the depression. So you had a gentleman who was like, you know, I know how we can get people down to Mesa. So John McPhee, he was the editor of Mesa newspaper. And he decided that a way to lure oh so many people to Mesa was to have Santa Claus jump out of a plane, which all was well and good, except when it came time for the gentleman he had hired to jump out of the plane, he found him in a bar where he had been drinking far too much courage. And so he was in no shape to get on an airplane and jump out of it. So what John did was he ran to a store and picked up a mannequin. And the idea was he would throw, it would go out of the plane. The parachute would launch and Santa would float down to the ground. And somebody, then he on the other end of that on the ground would pop up and it was supposed to be such an amazing moment. But as you can imagine, something went wrong. And that parachute on Santa did not open. So all these families got to watch Santa jump out of a plane and come crashing faster and faster down to the earth till there was just a pile of dust. All the parents had covered their kids' eyes as they were all trying to run away and avoid the horror of killing Santa. And then John popped up at the very end but he was too late because everyone had already left away to go see a therapist to get over 
seeing Santa smashed to smithereens. So John never really lived down. He kept hoping that people would forget, but until he passed away, people still referred to him as the man that killed Santa. And so that is a Mesa Christmas story. Just <laughs> so luckily that hasn't happened since then, but you can go see the temple lights, which are pretty amazing as well as there's other spots around there to go see lights. But I, you know, I think the Mormon temple is just beautiful with all the lights and they're finally doing them again because it's now open again. So get on out there and go look at some Christmas lights. So now you'll see why you should have shared because no one else is going to tell you the stories that Jackie would tell you. So coming up next week, we actually have my friend Sean, who is a local humorist author. Um, we are going to have so much fun with him next week as a kind of new year's Eve Eve. I guess is the term that we should be using. So remember, if you don't make it into the chat, if you have any stories, questions, suggestions, things, I mean, Sherry, we, I think we really should try and have crazy Ed on because that sounds like a hoot of a good time. So you can always reach out to me through a variety of sources. Now, I always love to give a shout out to PJ, who is my bartender. And the reason why I'm now drinking Santa's Little Helper so tasty as well as chris and cole that did that video to in intro now as we get ready to say good night i want to so i re so phoenix schools phoenix number one is celebrating 150 years of having schools here in the valley and so i did some little like kind of fun history facts with them and so those are going to start launching next year but we did do a little video of just kind of who I am. So that way they can attach that as well. So people know who's spinning these fun facts. So that's what we're going to leave you with tonight. So I do want to say Merry Christmas. And I will see you same bat time, same bat channel for next year or next week with Sean. And we're going to have a lot of fun. So everyone have a great night on this Christmas Eve Eve. Hey everybody, Marshall Short, Arizona's hip historian. Now you might wonder, how did I get a name like that? Well, you know, when I first moved here, everyone I talked to said there was no history here, but I knew that wasn't true because every time I went for an adventure, it was on foot, on my bike, in a car, I came across so many amazing people, places, and stories that just need to be retold.